goals. How many goals did you make last year? Uh, I don't know, three to five maybe. And what Good were quality they? of life, six figure income, new car. I'm going to live another year. That's the first goal. <laughs> Once I graduate high school, I want to go skydiving and um, I don't know. There's so many things. I'll go to Hawaii, go to Fiji, um, backpack Europe. They always say that you should write goals down if you're going to actually accomplish them. Um, I write my goals at work, uh, and there's quite a few there. <laughs> um, all of them. A couple of goals, but they're important and valuable goals. And so I'd rather meet and work towards those than have a lot of small goals that I won't be able to achieve. So. <laughs> Did you make any goals this year, Wyatt? I just uh, made the goal to make more money in business. I work for myself. My goal is to be the last one in and the first one out. If you think about it, goals are everywhere in American culture. Everywhere. They're on our posters and our calendars. They're in our New Year's resolutions and in the campaign slogans of our elected leaders. They are the entire point of any sport that requires a ball or a puck. And very often, they are the source of our biggest accomplishments. Goals for better lives are what lured America's first settlers across the Atlantic. And goals for a better society are what inspired their descendants to wrangle over their infant nation's most important goals. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. And today, after 50 recessions, 44 presidents, a score of wars, and a dozen technological revolutions, those goals are still the compass that guides American society. Kirkland has its own compass, established by the city council and pursued every day by the city staff. When city council members began talking of goals in 2000, they wrangled. They were, after all, establishing the city's most basic values. Getting seven people to agree on just one goal that encompasses everything a community ought to be would be a challenge. In 2009, Kirkland City Council did better than that. They agreed on 10. And this is what they decided. Neighborhoods, council members said, should be active and have their own identities. Public safety should be responsive and prevention-based. The city's road should accommodate all kinds of wheels and all sizes of feet. Its paths and pipes should function efficiently and serve the city's growing population. It should protect the natural environment for today's citizens and tomorrow's generations. It should provide recreational opportunities that enhance the health of the community. The city itself should foster a vibrant business culture that represents the community's diverse needs. And at the same time, it should remove barriers to opportunities for everyone and support those in need. Its stock of housing should reflect the diversity of the community. And it should support all of these goals from predictable revenue. The city should live within its means. To ensure the prudent pursuit of these goals, the council established four underlying principles. They'd be achieved as efficiently as possible. When possible, Kirkland would leverage regional partnerships to accomplish the goals. All of the goals would protect neighborhood identities while continuing to build a better Kirkland and progress toward them would be measurable. Kirkland employs 450 people, and everything each one of those workers does contributes in some way to one of these 10 goals. Measuring progress toward them, however, isn't as simple as profit and loss statements or victory and defeat columns. The city of Kirkland, after all, isn't in the business of turning profits or winning contests. It's in the business of service. And to gauge its performance, the city council establishes a series of measurable outcomes that reflect progress toward each of those goals. The council then sets targets for those outcomes. So how does this work? Let's take the goal of balanced transportation as an example. Ultimately, the city council wants to reduce the number of people who drive alone to work and increase the number of people who carpool or use active transportation modes, such as cycling, walking, and busing. To get more people into active transportation, the city council figures Kirkland has to make those methods of travel faster, safer, and more enjoyable. And to measure the progress, the council established outcomes. For instance, by the year 2022, 35% of all residents will use active transportation methods for all trips inside the city. And 90% of residents will be satisfied with the maintenance of the city's infrastructure used for active transportation methods. One of the ways the city has prepared for more balanced transportation is by building sidewalks to schools. By the year 2019, 
City Council members aim to build sidewalks along all of the city's public elementary school routes. Those sidewalks, they figure, will make active transportation safer, faster, and more enjoyable to more people. More sidewalks will encourage more people to choose the sidewalk over the car and at the same time increase citizen satisfaction with the city's infrastructure for active transportation. So you ask, how is the city doing? The answer is quite well. By 2010, 81% of Kirkland area schools had sidewalks leading to them. By the end of 2011, the city had constructed walk routes to another eight schools. And 84% of citizens said they were satisfied with the choices Kirkland provided for active transportation methods. To put it simply, Kirkland is well on its way. This is the system the city uses to grade its progress toward all 10 of its goals. And every year, beginning in 2010, the city council publishes that grade report. Of course, goals are more than ideals, and they are more than a series of targets and outcomes. They are strategic aspirations, years-long accumulations of collaboration, planning, and execution. And Kirkland's ambitious goals demand the best in all of these. But these goals are also attainable, and by working toward them, Kirkland has already become, and will continue to be, a great community. A place where people want to be. That is the ultimate measure of a city's success. You know, it's pretty walkable. It's improving. Well, it's like here, we have make parks. The city here looked forward a long time ago and had this land set aside, so, you know, this isn't all built up here. And uh, they did a good job on that, and that's what all cities, I think, should do. I'm not really afraid to, I guess, walk at night with him. Like, if I go for a stroll, especially now how it gets dark at like four, um, I'm not that concerned about it getting dark and getting home at a later time. Um, it's just, I don't know, you, you know, you see the cops around, and you see a bunch of families around, and it just seems to be very, like, family friendly. It's a cool spot to live. Young people, trendy. I love everything about it. It's nature and the city, it's very small. Um, I think that for the east side especially, Kirkland is a beautiful place. I love the water, I love the access to shopping and to good restaurants, and I, it's just fun. I love that it's like, a, I feel like it's almost like a beach community. It's kind of, you know, you can walk wherever you want to go. And Compared to some of the other cities in the surrounding areas, we found that this would be like a quiet um, and yet comfortable and cozy place to live at. Making Kirkland great is a project for all of its citizens, not just the city council or city workers. So what are you waiting for? Visit kirklandwa.gov and give these goals some of your best citizen scrutiny. Are these the right goals? How can the city do better? Your city will improve because of you, but only if you get involved.